students my name is Neeti Seed and thanks for watching Edupedia word videos my topic for the presentation is first section of the chapter morphology of flowering plants in this section of the video we will discuss about the morphology of angiosperms angiosperms are also called as flowering plants in day to day language okay now question arises what is morphology what it is all about so morphology it is made up of two words first is morph and second is logy okay so morph means form and logy means study of okay so study of form or feature is called as morphology okay and students please note that morphology is of two types first is external morphology in wherein we study about the external structure and second is internal morphology which we also call it as anatomy wherein we study about the internal structure of flowering plants okay and please note that internal morphology and anatomy they both are same okay now comes external morphology this is a body of a flowering plant the wide range in the structure of higher plants they never fail to fascinate us even though the angiosperms they show a large diversity in external structure which we commonly call it as morphology okay they all are characterized by presence of root which is this present of uh, stem leaves flowers and fruits so angiosperms they all are characterized by presence of roots stem leaf flower and fruit okay this is root part okay this is root system which is homogeneous in nature that means it has only root no uh, flower no fruit nothing that's why it is called as homogeneous in nature whereas this shoot system is called as heterogeneous in nature students and see this is the main root or primary root okay in majority of our dicot plants the direct elongation of the radical it leads to the formation of primary root see this is the primary root which emerges from the seed okay which grows inside the soil and it bears lateral roots of several orders that are referred to as secondary tertiary etc roots okay so this is our primary root and these are lateral branches and this is our shoot system okay and this is heterogeneous because it bears flower fruit leaves branches etc okay see this is a stem branch leaf flower that's why it is heterogeneous in nature let's see all parts once again and please note the students that root system it is vegetative in nature whereas shoot system because of the flower it is reproductive in nature okay external morphology of root see this is the primary root and these are the lateral branches okay it is always descending it grows towards the soil and it is positively geotropic geo means gravity and tropic means growth so when it grows towards the gravity then it is called as positively geotropic this plus sign is showing that it is positively geotropic students okay that means it grows towards the soil second feature of root is that it is hydrotropic in nature hydro means water and tropic means growth so it grows towards the water level which is present inside the soil okay now third is it is negatively phototropic see this minus sign is showing that it is negatively phototropic photo means sunlight and tropic means uh, growth so it is negatively geotropic uh, phototropic because it grows inside the soil not above the ground it is descending in nature okay that's why it is negatively phototropic it grows away from the light okay see this is the germinating seed this is uh, radical part 
that later on give rise to root system, primary root, lateral branches and this is plumule part that give rise to shoot system okay so this is radical part at which give rise to root and this is non green in nature please note that okay and these are the similar organ uh, such as primary root secondary root tertiary root and it has no nodes and internodes please note that now let's see the part of typical roots a typical root has five regions which are those from base to apex okay from base to apex let's see the parts region of root gap see this is student which is uh, like a thimble shape it is root gap root is always cover, covered by the apex by a thimble like structure which we call it as root gap now second is region of cell division a few millimeters above the root cap is a region of cell division or it is also called as region of meristematic activity where cells they keep on dividing. The cell of this region they are very small, they are very thin walled and with dense protoplasm. They divide repeatedly. The cell proximal to this uh, region they undergo rapid elongation let's see the region of uh, cell elongation and this is this okay so uh, herein they undergo rapid elongation and enlargement and they are responsible for the growth of the root in the plant this region is called as region of elongation the cells of the elongation zone they gradually differentiate and they mature hence this zone Proximal to the region of elongation is called as region of maturation, okay? And these, uh, because of the root hairs, it is called as region of absorption. Herein, many minerals and water or ions, they get absorbed because of the root hairs present, okay? And this is region of maturation. From this region, uh, some of the epidermal hairs from very fine and delicate thread like a structure called as root hairs arises. These root hairs they absorb water and mineral from the soil. Okay, and please note that the cell of elongation, which I just taught you, they gradually differentiate and mature, and hence this reason or this zone proximal to the reason of. Uh, elongation is called as region of maturation okay so these are the five layers or five regions of uh, typical root from base to apex okay so let's see root cap region it is tender apex of root which is covered by multicellular cap like a structure and it secretes lubricant for passage through soil that means it the root cap which is thimble uh, like structure it protects the tender apex of the root as it makes its way through the soil okay and it secretes uh, some kind of lubricant so that it make its own passage through the soil without being harmed okay now so the function is protection now let's see another root cap modification see it is seen in uh, pandanus okay where multiple root caps are seen multiple root caps are seen but generally it is seen that only one root cap is present in in one root okay but here this is root cap modification wherein multiple root caps are there and it is present in pandanus okay it is also present in acornia, piscia. Okay, see this is acornia. Root pockets because it is a aquatic plant. That's why it has root pockets. Root pockets they are filled with air, and that helps to stay in water because it helps in buoyancy. Okay. So root pockets they are filled with air that helps in buoyancy. This I am talking about the acornia. So these are the root cap modification. First we saw multiple root caps in pantanus 
and in Ecornia we saw root pockets okay that is filled with air that helps these uh, Ecornia plant in buoyancy okay now second region of uh, typical root is meristematic region students where cell they keep on dividing the growing point of root they are made up of compactly arranged and thin walled meristematic cells okay meristematic cells mean the cell that keep on dividing okay they have the power of cell division okay what's the function of this region it helps in longitudinal growth now third region is region of cell elongation it is newly formed cell they are capable of rapid cell elongation that's why the name of this region is region of cell elongation because they are capable of rapid cell elongation what's the function of this region it helps to increase the root length or it helps in longitudinal growth of roots another function is absorption of mineral because uh, above this uh, multiple epidermal hairs are present okay that helps in the absorption of mineral ions and water from the soil now fourth region is region of absorption it is a region of root hair epidermal because it has epidermal hair uh, which we call it as root hair it is produced by outer piliferous layer or epiblema see this layer of root is called as epiblema or it is also called as piliferous layer okay root hair they are unicellular they are elongated and they are tubular function of root hairs is that they help in the absorption of water now fifth region is region of cell maturation it is a region of cell differentiation where they get differentiated and thus they mature okay they are made up of thick walled impermeable cells that means these cells they won't allow anything to pass in or out of the cells that's why they are called as impermeable cells and they are of thick wall cells they are differentiated into tissues like cortex xylem and phloem okay now what's the function of this uh, region Re uh, fixation of plant body it helps in the anchorage of the plant body okay because it is the uh, base layer you can say or base region that's why it is it helps in the anchorage of the plant body and another function is conduction of absorbed nutrient now let's see function of roots first is fixation of uh, plant body that means it helps in the anchorage and second is absorption of water and mineral okay because of the root hairs present translocation of absorbed water and mineral to the shoot system through a conducting tissue which is called as xylem and another function is prevention of soil erosion this is most crucial function of root some plant roots they perform special functions like fleshy roots they store food green roots they perform photosynthesis have you ever heard of green roots no so uh, but there are few exceptions okay so green roots they perform photosynthesis respiratory root they perform gaseous exchange and parasitic root they absorb food and water from holes and vegetative propagation also aerial roots they absorb moisture this all will be studying in detail in my later uh, presentation okay now type of the root system a root along with its branches they constitute a root system okay they constitute a root system first is tap root system and second is adventitious root system students see this is tap root wherein one primary root is there and other lateral branches are there but in adventitious root system there is no primary root no secondary root and no tertiary root okay now type of roots let's see first is tap root system tap root system they are seen in mustard plant 
it arises from the radical part of a germinating seed and first primary root emerges and then later on secondary and tertiary see these are the small very small hairs they are tertiary root and these are the branches which is called as uh, secondary roots so it bears lateral roots of several orders that are referred as secondary tertiary etc roots the primary root and its branches they constitute a tap root system and it is seen in mustard plant it is a characteristic of dicots it is seen in brassica whose uh, this is the botanical name of mustard okay helianthus annus this is uh, the botanical name of sunflower okay see this is older lateral root uh, which are present at the base and these are the younger lateral root which are present at the apex so this kind of succession is known as acropetal succession okay tap root system which is seen in mustard or it is a characteristic of dicots students helianthus annus okay this is the tap root system of sunflower whose botanical name is helianthus annus now let's talk about the adventitious root system students in monocot plants the primary root is short lived and they are replaced by large number of roots and these roots they originate from the base of the stem and they constitute the fibrous root system as seen in wheat plant okay this is uh, the characteristic of wheat plant it does not arise from radical unlike tap root system okay they usually develop from base of the stem or node or leaf okay that means from leaves also adventitious root can arise from uh, stem also it could arise and from nodes also it could arise okay so it never arises from radical part of a germinating embryo or seed and these are the characteristics of monocots such as maize and wheat and sugarcane equal sized root they grow in clusters which look like fiber see this is looking much like a fiber fibrous structure okay unlike tap root system they are also called as fibrous roots okay adventitious root system it is seen in maize wheat sugarcane now let's talk about the modification of roots students first is tap root and second is adventitious root so tap root is for food storage modified forms are called as fusiform napiform conical form then comes for respiration and for nitrogen fixation adventitious roots for food storage such as simple tuberous root fasciculated roots and others for mechanical support such as prop roots climbing roots and stilt roots and for a special function like epiphytic root photosynthetic root and sucking roots okay now let's talk about the modification of tap root for food storage this is the first modification of tap root for food storage see the food got stored in the primary root and these are the lateral branches of the roots such as secondary and tertiary see this is the normal tap root modified into a tap root tap root it becomes swollen and fleshy due to food storage hypocotyle it may also join tap root in storing food material and the stem is reduced as you can see this is the stem part it got reduced and discoid bearing radical leaves see these are the radical leaves and it has got reduced or you can show that it showed a uh, stunted growth based on some typical shape fleshy roots are classified into fusiform okay they are swollen in middle but they are tapering towards the end see this is tapering towards the end it is uh, seen in radish whose botanical name is raffinus sativus okay 
Another form uh, or modification is conical wherein it is broad at the base but it gradually tapers towards the apex. Okay. This is seen in carrot whose botanical name is Taucus carota. Then comes napiform. See base is much swollen and almost spherical and abruptly it tapers towards uh, the apex. This is called as napiform form. And example of this is beet or beta vulgaris. Okay. Beta vulgaris is the na botanical name of beet. Now another modification of uh, root is uh, respiration. For respiration, halophytes. Halophytes are the plant that grow in marsh, swamp or salt lakes. Okay. Therein, uh, in halophyte uh, plants, nematophores originate. Okay, Hal uh, nematophores are the respiratory roots. So, halophytes are the plant that div uh, that grows in the saline or uh, area. So, they develop re special respiratory root that grows above the ground, unlike other roots. See, this is negatively geotropic. That means it is growing away from the soil. And they have lenticels which are used for respiration or it helps in gaseous exchange for respiration. See, these are the nematophores. It is seen in rhizophora. Okay. It is also seen in Ephesania, Sonoracea and Haritera. Okay. I repeat, Rhizophora, Avicenia, Sonoracea and Haritiera. Halophyte plants wherein nematophores are seen. Okay. Now another modification is for nitrogen fixation. Tap root of legume, leguminous plants, they show root nodules. See these are the root nodules that has rhizobium bacteria in it. That means rhizobium bacteria, it resides inside the nodule of leguminous plant. Rhizobium, they fix atmospheric nitrogen. Okay. See, this is the picture of a leguminous plant. It is seen in pea, beans and the roots of a plant, they provide food and shelter to the bacteria. Whereas the bacteria, it fix uh, nitrogen for the legume. That means this is the mutualistic relationship between a bacteria and a, a root of the plant. Since both the plant and bacteria, they are mutually benefited. That's why this relation is called as symbiosis or mutualism. Then let's see modification of fibrous root students. First is for food storage. This is simple tuberous root. That means root will become swollen okay it will bond singly root will arise from node of a stem see this is the typical uh, picture of simple tuberous root it is seen in sweet potato sweet potato botanical name is epomia batatus okay it is also known as shaka kant or ratalu these are the uh, common day-to-day -day, uh, language of sweet potato. For mechanical support, prop roots, they are the modification of adventitious root. Okay. That means, see, these are the roots that is providing the mechanical support to the huge plant such as banyan. Prop roots, they arise from the horizontal branches. See, these are the horizontal branches from which these prop roots are emerging. And it is growing vertically downward till they penetrate soil. Secondary growth, it makes them thick for mechanical support. A 200-year-old banyan tree, it grows in Indian Botanical Garden. It has 1700 prop roots. Can you imagine 1700 prop roots? Okay. See, this is the, uh, this is that plant, Ficus bangalensis, that has 1700 prop roots. 
Now another uh, modification is climbing root. Okay, roots they are produced at nodes. See these are the nodes from where, uh, usually from where leaf arises. But here in this case, in this modification of uh, adventitious root, roots they come out from the nodes. They attach to the solid support and they climb over it. Okay, like this. That's why they are called as climbing root because they have hook like a structure. It is seen in money plant whose botanical name is pothos. Another is piper nigrum which we call it as kalimich in our day to day language and another is piper beetle which is uh, pan. Okay, So these are uh, climbing root or you can say a modification of adventitious roots. Now comes stilt root students. See, they arise from the lower node. See, this is the shoot part. This is the first node, second node, third node. So these roots, because they can arise from the base of the node, so they arise from the lower node. They grow obliquely pen to penetrate the soil. Okay, see, this is growing obliquely. In monocots like maize, Sugarcane, Bajra, Jawar, stilt roots, they grow in hole like a structure. Okay. They provide mechanical support. It is seen in maize. It is also seen in sugarcane and it grows like a hole. After penetrating soil, they provide support to the stem. Okay. That's why they are meant to provide mechanical support. It is also seen in pandanus whose uh, common name is screw pine. Stilt roots they arise only from obliquely growing stem to provide support. Okay. Kindly recollect pandanus also show multiple root gap. I have already taught you that pandanus they show multiple root gap. Butterous root. A tree root that extends above ground as a plate like outgrowth of a trunk that supports the tree. Okay, so these are the buttress roots that extends above the ground as a plate like growth. Buttress roots they are mainly found in trees of tropical rainforest. Okay, see this is a typical representation of buttress root wherein uh, they grow like a uh, or plate like a structure. Okay. This is seen in Terminalia. Now let's talk about another modification and that is epiphytic root, sucking roots and photosynthetic roots. So first these are for special functions. Epiphytic root, roots they grow perched on the horizontal branches of big trees. Okay, see this is the horizontal branch of a big tree wherein these roots they grow perched on the horizontal branches of such huge trees. Such plants are called as epiphytes. Epiphytes they develop a special aerial hanging root which we call it as epiphytic root and these are the spongy tissues are called as velamen. Okay, so these roots they are spongy due to special tissue and that is called as velamen. Velamen tissue they are hygroscopic. Hygroscopic means moisture uh, attracting and they absorb moisture. It is not hydro, it is hygroscopic. Hydroscopic means water loving and hygroscopic means moisture loving. They are also called as assimilatory roots as they can perform photosynthesis. Epiphytic roots uh, is seen in Vanda and Dendrobium. Sucking roots, they are highly specialized and they are microscopic roots that develop by parasites to absorb nourishment from host. That's why they are called as sucking roots. Viscum album is an example of sucking root. Roots, they penetrate only xylem of the host to absorb water and mineral. They are partial parasite. Now parasitic roots. It is seen in Cascata dodder. Roots, they suck food directly from the phloem. Phloem is a conductive tissue that conducts uh, 
food material from leaf to the other parts of the plant body so roots they suck food directly from the phloem and water and mineral from xylem okay it is total parasite okay see this is total parasite that's why it has uh, or it attacks both xylem and the phloem of a host plant see this is the host and this is the cascata which is total parasite and these are the hostorium hostorium are uh, also called as parasitic or sucking roots now let's talk about the photosynthetic roots they are green aerial adventitious roots they perform photosynthesis they are also called as assimilatory roots and it is seen in tenospora it is also seen in trapa okay it is also seen in tenophyllum so these were the modifications of two kind of root system tap root and adventitious root system and that was all about root of a angiosperms or flowering plants in my next section of the presentation we'll be talking about the stem of flowering plants so till then stay tuned and keep watching edupedia word videos thank you